And we're back. We're getting ready to go on our second weekend trip. This time we're going a little bit further away, uh, about uh, two hours or so. Last one was about 20 minutes. <laughs> so this one's gonna be about two hours. This is gonna be my first experience driving it on the freeway. Pulling the trailer. Yes, you should be terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. So I'm looking for forward to uh, cranking this bad boy up to 55 miles per hour. Seeing what you can do on the open road. <laughs> More later. Bye bye. I'm break, getting pretty good at backing this thing into the hitch, am I? Aren't yeah, I? you are. Am I? Aren't I? You are. I am. You am. Aren't I? You are. Damn. Yeehaw! 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 Yeehaw!
for breakfast. Welcome. This is our neighbor Annie. I want to give Annie a sausage. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm allowed. You ready, Annie? Come get the sausage. Morning. Last night sleeping was okay. This morning's breakfast is fantastic. Thanks to her. Oh yeah. You like my hair? I worked on it all night. Whoa. Well, that's on the seat. I know. I gotta get it. Oh I'll mark boy. Away first. Well, once I sit down, whoa, it, should, whoa. It, should, it, should, it should even us out. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> there you go. All right, thank you. <laughs> hey, you did it. Yeah, you realize we're never getting out of this, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're in a pedal boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, really close to the water. As far as ideas go, this has probably not been our best. <laughs> I guess this is what steers us? Yeah. It's going to be exhausting. <laughs> so here we are, just floating along, enjoying Lake Grooms. Okay, so this was fun. We just capsized. And this... In this boat. The paddle stopped working, started taking off water, started taking on water, and then uh, it flipped. Pretty cool, huh? Great time. Woo! So here we are after the excitement of the boat capsizing. I'm gonna give you a little, little more to the story. So we took the paddle boat out, but when you take the paddle boat out, you have to take life jackets with you. you have to, you're supposed to wear them, but since my wife and I are a little bigger than most, those life jackets aren't going to fit us. And they're like, as long as you have them in the boat, it's fine. Um, you sign a waiver, whatever. So, so we go out there, and it's fine. We're pedaling around. It's very exhausting, pedaling that boat. But eventually we decide, okay, we're going to head back in. So we start pedaling back in. Suddenly the, the paddles uh, are refusing to engage. It's like we're pedaling, but we're not moving. We try it in back, try it in reverse, same deal. Um, and then we notice, or she, my wife, she notices, she hears the sound of water coming in. Look down, it's coming in where the, where the pedal meets the boat. So we've got a bunch of water coming in there. So we're like, well, well crap. <laughs> we gotta really kinda get back to shore here. So we're trying to pedal, and of course, we're not going anywhere. So the wife gets on the phone, and she's calling their front desk. It takes them three takes her three times to, to get through, and she's in the middle of explaining that hey, we're trapped and we're taking on water. Can somebody like come out and maybe throw us a line or something? And uh, about you know, 12 seconds into that conversation, over we go. The front just fills up with the water, and we just flip forward and I go out the side, and Shelly gets kind of trapped under. I was kind of freaking out trying to get her out. She got out. Bad news is her phone got wrecked. Um, hopefully we can we can salvage it with some uh, rice, which means another trip to Meyer. Thank goodness for Meyer. And, um, and a boo boo. Oh, and she got a little boo boo. She got a scratch in her hand, which she's tending to right now. And if I was a decent husband, I'd be doing it for her. But instead, instead I'm uh, I'm recording this. So. But anyway, um, back to the life jackets because we weren't wearing them. They, uh, they went over with the boat. One of them kind of got caught in the mix, and so that was easy to salvage. The other one floated about 30 yards away, and so I had to go out and get it. And I think that this is one of the few times that a person had to save a life jacket. So there you go. More later. That's our story. Yeah, and we're, we're sticking to it. But now we have a story. And it's actually, when I think back on it, it was actually kind of funny. I mean, I'd never capsized before. That was, that was exciting. 
I'm glad it was on a very small lake and in a, in a paddle boat. And it was very sweet. He was very concerned about me because I was stuck underneath it. Yeah, it was like coming down on top of her and I was, that was my first priority was to try and get her out and, and she got out. I don't even think she needed me, but, uh, but I was, I'm like, her phone can be replaced. She can't. Who's going to make me pancakes? Right? Hey there. As my wife is tending to her myriad of insect bites that are all over her feet and ankles with some, what is that stuff? Caladrill. Caladrill. Uh, before she absolutely goes insane. I want to take a minute and discuss with you something that uh, I finally got around to doing on this trip. Now for the more sensitive of you out there, this is, this is a part that you're going to want to skip past. But today I use the toilet in the RV it's something I'd been avoiding because as I stated before I'm a person of considerable girth and considerable height perhaps less considerable height than the girth but still point remains now RV toilets tend to be manufactured using various types of molded plastic. Plastic, you know, is kind of iffy, you know, as to how well it holds up to uh, extreme forces. And I have been known to be an extreme force. But this morning, after a few rumbles in the tummy, I decided it was, it was time. It was time for the maiden toilet voyage because I was not going outside and trudging to the the bathroom area here at the park. So I got up and I went in there and I set myself down delicately and I did what I needed to do, which was was do do. <laughs> then you know I did the new the usual things that come with that. Um, you know, and it all went about as well as could be expected. I, there, nothing broke. Um, I didn't have to call for help. I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't get stuck. Managed to take care of everything. Now, it was noisy. Not the pooping part, although, well, alright, maybe. But the, the creaking of the, as you're sitting on the toilet and you're moving around when you're trying to take care of business... It is very loud, and it's very disconcerting because you think you're breaking the toilet. And the last thing you want to do when you're trying to <laughs> drop a deuce is break the toilet. It becomes, you know, inconvenient, to say the least. So, but it, at the end of the day, I mean, it didn't take all day. You know, to, it wasn't like that. But at the end of the day, as the expression goes, it all worked out. Uh, in fact, it worked out so well, I did it again a few hours later. <laughs> Apparently I ate something that didn't quite agree with me. Uh, so, uh, so, so that was, uh, that, was, that was good, so I'm glad. Things are working out, for the most part, on this RV. That refrigerator is still a royal piece of shit, though. <laughs> So I just, I just, I couldn't help but mention that because again, 14 damn hours for it to get cold. Toilet, not too bad. I'm all right with it. One of these days I'm going to get to the shower. See how that goes. Anyway, thanks for listening. More later. Pick up your other ones. We need four. All four of them. <laughs>